let's get this started again. And uh, Edoardo Maria Bellucci is uh, our first speaker. Uh, he's uh, from Rome and he has this uh, Diacronie Lab, which is both a studio and a live music project and also uh, Max for Live devices, uh, kind of independent software project. Welcome, Eduardo. Please uh, go ahead with your presentation. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thanks, Massimiliano. As, um, as he said, I'm from Rome and I'm right now uh, here in the Diagrone Lab that, uh, as he said before, uh, is uh, basically a, a project, a music studio and laboratory where we uh, manage production of um, contemporary and electroacoustic music and also acoustic music based, uh, based on the contemporary repertoire. And uh, we also manage the um, development of uh, technologies for the support of, uh, I don't know, stuff like uh, um, art installations, uh, multimedia project, and, and so on. It's a really young uh, studio with a really young project uh, because it was found in 2019, but with the pandemic in, in between, uh, it's like uh, it was founded yesterday. And... Um, and nothing. And today I'm here thanks to Massimiliano, thanks to the uh, Thank uh, Music Art Space uh, um, uh, staff for having invited me. And today I'm talking about um, uh, the recent device I've developed for Diagronia Lab, uh, and uh, in particular its implementation, uh, its core engine, which is developed in Gen language and in Gen environment. And uh, particularly uh, focusing on the on the um, uh, transcription of uh, some of the code line using the code box uh, with GenExp uh, languages uh, language for its um, uh, and, and I will talk about uh, why I use this uh, why I try to uh, transcript it inside the, the code box and how it works and which which are the pro and. Uh, um, and the uh, and the aspects of the um, the device in, in its uh, global figure. So uh, I think it's better if I start my screen. If uh... yeah, sure. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, first stuff, I just want to um, show you a really. Um, a really fast um, patch I prepared here to explain for who doesn't really maybe know what a wave shaper does. And because I am talking about a wave shaper, a resonant wave shaper, uh, which I, I'm going to, to show you in a minute. But basically for those of you who, who doesn't know what a wave shaper does, it basically uh, take an incoming signal, which is the signal that you're going to distort, and um, using the lookup uh, algorithm, which is a, a sort of like a sort of like a, a phase distortion algorithm, algorithms, where the incoming signal become the, um, the the index of the table reading, and the table you're using is the also called the transfer function, which is going to give the the Stosha sound uh, hits timber. And uh, as you can see, for example, uh, if I show you, now I'm using a really uh, low frequency oscillation just to make you see how it's going to do. This is a simple cosine oscillator, which is reading a, a linear table. And the, the result, it's the same oscillator, which is, uh, that's because it's a linear function inside. And uh, the interesting things become, the, the things become interesting when you change uh, using some complex wave table. Uh, which is going to have uh, a more complex uh, output and uh, and it's going to result in a complex timber result uh, for the um, for the distortion unit for these uh, things if you want to uh, depend about this uh, um, this kind of algorithms are talking uh, are talking about uh, later uh, but for now let's just say that's how it works and uh, I'm going to show you some uh, little 
uh, presentation I prepared on the device. As you can see, this is the wave shape of the device, and uh, uh, it it based on the first unit which you can uh, trim the audio inside uh, if you want to um, make it louder or or, or turn down the volume a bit. Uh, a little filter unit where you can where you can choose in uh, from three different filters uh, and uh, the cutoff. Uh, for the center frequency changing. Um, that's the core engine of the distortion. When you can see here, it's where you can choose the function, the transfer function for the distortion unit. And each transfer function has its own timber. And then I'm, I'm going to talk about this uh, in a minute. After the distortion with the lookup algorithms of the wave shaper, you have uh, uh, a simple um, four band parametric equalizer. And then that's the, the uh, let's say, the particularity of this uh, device, which is the fact that is a resonant wave shaper is a resonant distortion, which means that the output of a resonant of the distortion unit it's then passed by um, through a, a a loop, which take the outside audio and take it back through the input of the distortion unit. And so it's going to produce a, a, a more complex and more powerful timbre. And sometimes it can also be um, tricky when you use the frequency of the intonation of the feedback, which is going to change the um, also the sort of, it's going to make a sort of tapping uh, delay sounds. But let's see in the, um, let's see it in action. The first uh, things I prepared is uh, uh, a little patch which can analyze the frequency response of this uh, of this device because uh, there are these two uh, different families of um, uh, transfer function which I name it odd and even and if you see now I'm using a simple sine wave as an input signal and uh, I hope you okay that's the sine wave I hope you you can hear it but I think uh, yes no we can't no you can't no okay let's see it's strange because it's output let me see a bit uh, maybe it's because it's uh, just a sine wave but it, it's you it should Pro probably probably the audio preferences of zoom are the thing you want to check again if it's just you know the input microphone itself or if, if you combine it also oh, no, i combined it i combined it okay yeah uh, let me see if maybe with the distortion you can hear a more yeah content. we can hear something okay okay so maybe it's mm, i can maybe it's better like this not sure if it's uh, the getting you know through your microphone or not though right, it's me... not really that better I'm uh, no we can't okay definitely. so so let me check the audio preferences a bit sorry it's okay uh... this happens uh, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> also during the courses so no worries okay, so let me see <laughs> Three and four. Okay, well, so we, we have some. Uh, I see that you're f full scale on the output, uh, so it's uh, suspicious because I can't really hear it, you know. Okay, maybe uh, you want to uh, go through it in the meantime and show us what happens to the spectrum of it. Uh, and then uh, if uh, we can also manage to hear it afterwards, uh, we can yeah. back to it, right? Okay. So Shall we do this? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Great. it's better like this. Maybe with other sound, it could be better. But then just, just to show you that uh, actually, the um, the first kind, the first family of uh, wave sh wave shape function, um, which have the zero crossing in the middle, mm -hmm. will produce uh, uh, as you can see a spectrum where the, 
the um, uh, the fundamental frequency remain uh, itself uh, uh, with um, with this level, uh, and that's due to the um, zero crossing middle of the um, of the table, and that's uh, uh, the difference between the first kind of um, transfer function and the and the second kind, which doesn't have, as you can see, the zero cr zero crossing in the middle. Okay. And so if you see, it's going to kill the power of the first of the fundamental and generate collateral uh, harmonics. Uh, and clearly it won't, it won't create uh, um, the energy for the harmonics is nonlinear, also because this kind of distortion is also called nonlinear distortion due to the um, nonlinear function that we are using as a transfer function for the distortion. Um, and that's basically uh, the, um, the simple way to use it as a, a simple di distortion unit. Then, now I had to be sure that you can hear something, otherwise this example are... Oh, we were hearing it through your microphone. I mean, I, mean, yeah. I was in this latest example, you know. Let me, let me see if you see, if you hear something also right now. Yes. A simple bit, are you hearing this? A really simple bit. Okay. Uh, yeah. But it's through my microphone, or you can hear. I, so... I think it's through the microphone because there are some, uh, you know, uh, gated uh, moments. Uh, okay. Maybe. Ah. Uh, wait. 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 Um, maybe I have to share my audio also with. Me. Let me see. Okay. Just a moment, otherwise sure. I will I will keep on without. Uh, I don't know here. It should be it should be useful. Now it should it should sound. Yeah, Philan uh, uh, says that the live audio device should be set to Zoom, just to Zoom. Ah. Yes. Thanks, Philan. And tick the share sound button when screen sharing. So yes, that that's also the thing. When you do screen sharing, you mm. have uh, more options, and you can also share the the audio. Okay, let me just. Uh... Otherwise, I can um, switch on the the loudspeaker and make you hear through the loudspeaker because I'm not sure. I am so sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. You know, this is also some uh, compatibility between uh, different. No, but be because I I always use these uh, these settings and they always work. So yeah, I'm... it's uh, some. You know, sometimes uh, Zoom has its proprietary uh, thing for, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for the virtual routing. So uh, yeah. This time I'm using I'm using an output of the a virtual output of the of my of my board. And uh, okay. in the virtual output, I'm sending out. Yeah, yeah. Output of, uh, so it's kind of strange, you know. Uh, mm, try to get through it uh, and uh, to show show us uh, like the features of what you are doing. Okay, so let's let's do something like this. Um, the audio problem, I, I will solve it later. So I will just show you. Uh, uh, what's the core engine of the device, uh, which is not not necessary with audio, and then maybe in the breakout rooms I will solve this problem of the audio and then make you hear the um, the stuff. So um, as you can see from this this the inside of the patch. I hope you can see, but I think yes. yes. Okay, and. Um, I will talk uh, uh, more. I will deepen the the each part of the um, of the algorithms uh, later. But the main core engine of the of the wave shaper is here. This inside. For this uh, meeting, I've uh, cleaned all the um, uh, the code. In in fact, in the in the previous version of the of the same uh, uh, distortion. I um, I didn't have a code for okay. the inside, but it was simply made in Gen, in Gen uh, as you can see from here. And uh, as you can see, it um, I also used the uh, um, this is what you can 
understand better the the um, that's the diagram of the of the wave shaper so you have uh, like i said before pre filtering unit the table lookup for band equalizer and the feedback look uh, the feedback loop in particular this it's uh, better illustrated here where you have the input signal. The drive control controls the amount of the signal inside the table lookup. Then you have to choose from the table you want to use. That's the equalizer and then the feedback delay, okay? And the power of max and in general, max, MSP and gen is that when you use object-oriented programming, you can follow the, the, the audio paths, the flutes of the audio. And as you can see here, we have uh, the, the lookup wave tables inside a selector. Um, then there is the graphic queue uh, where there is a single um, a single patch for every for every band, and each band is made using a, that's something you can find in the example of uh, of uh, Gen when you when you download Max, and here it's a little code where you can find them. Um, it's what is basically happening inside the filter coef uh, um, object of Max. So it calculates the coefficient for uh, uh, B quote filters uh, using the center frequency, the gain at the Q of the, um, of the uh, filter as the main variables. And then it outputs the coefficient you need. And here inside, you have the, the classical scheme of uh, 2.20 filter, it's a B quadratic filter uh, scheme. And starting from here, I thought that uh, in, in some ways um, you could uh, condense this stuff uh, you can find uh, um, in this way of using uh, gen inside uh, a code, not because uh, code box is actually uh, a better solution, a better audio solution for Max. Actually, um, it works in the same way, but uh, it could be useful in in when you're thinking about uh, uh, sharing what the audio path of your device uh, um, is uh, for other programming languages. I don't know if you know some about, for example, Faust or also sure. also other other um, programming languages like C plus plus or Python that are. Uh, largely used for development of the um, audio unit or VST. And the logic of top down, which is a typical logic of uh, programming languages like also the code box language, could be more um, useful in when you have to share these or to understand without having to know the logic of Max MSP. And so here, as you can see, uh, can, can I ask you just a yeah. little curiosity, very very quick? Yeah. Your filters are in a cascade. Uh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Our serious, cascading, uh, cascading in serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our cascading. In... Yeah, tell me. Yeah, yeah, no, no, please. Sorry. No, no, no. Don't worry. Yeah, uh, because of the needing of any queuing, you have to put in serious your 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 different filters. So you can see here that's the low shelf filters with uh, it's for the low frequency. Yeah. Two peak notch we are responsible for the mid low frequency and the mid high frequency, and then the high for for the high frequency. Okay. Each for each little patch of filter involved this little code that we different for, coefficients and yeah uh, different yeah. coefficients that are always inside a big word filter that it's the standard uh, second order two pole to zero filter yes thanks. and yeah no worries uh, thank you for the question and uh, since uh, we're using four filters which involves always the uh, same um uh, expression of the big quad of a big quad filters um and especially the peak notch for the low mid and low high are the same kind of filter with some, with uh, only a different uh, center frequency a uh, different cutoff i thought that especially for the second unit of the um, web shaper it could be useful to uh, transcode uh, to write this down in a code so here's the code of the second version of the 1.1 version of the web shaper when you can where you can see uh, i this I did not to convert everything, every single unit in a code because I still think that Max's MSP and Jen as well as they are 
uh, their capabilities to let you understand the uh, audio path uh, with uh, you using these uh, input and output on the objects. But I condensed the two main parts of the algorithms. In this main part, as you can see, there's uh, I reallocate all the wavetables of uh, uh, recalling the buffers which are outside the, um, the gem patch. Um, then I simply recall each lookup wavetable. I little little thing I think that could be a more um, elegant way to write this down, but. For now, I, I for the lookup wavetable uh, engine, I use this that actually anyway is uh, it's clear to read. And the second part for the EQing, as you can see, I try to zoom in a bit. As you can see, I use it uh, like um, I, I use the function inside code to uh, declare the different function function for the three for the three filters that I'm using. So low shelf uh, computing the uh, low shelf para uh, coefficient using always uh, center frequency gain and Q, and that's for pick uh, pick notch as well and high shelf. And since the this function are output uh, with the, with more than one uh, variables. These variables are then passed to the bequote filter uh, function. And so actually the only part you need for the EQing is this part where you recall the different bequote uh, function and inside, uh, inside this uh, function, you recall the um, variables that are out, that are outputting from these first functions. And here it is the the collapse it condensed the code for the EQing, and uh, for the feedback of the of the nice. for, of the wave shaper, you always have here the delay, which implement a control in uh, in in samples uh, from outside that you have a control uh, of the frequency, uh, rescaling for the feedback amount, and then it goes straight up back to the the chain and rescaled by the drive control and that's it so it actually is really it's quite simple as an engine uh, but quite efficient uh, uh, also for his how do you feature that uh, right now we didn't hear <laughs> for a technical mistake i made it's I okay so that looks very neat uh, eduardo i wanted to ask you because maybe some of uh, the attendants today they are not that familiar with the code box and stuff yeah uh, how did you clean up uh, your whole patch uh, to turn it into such a you know uh, an accurate code yeah uh, yeah sure you know um another important and great feature of gen is that actually when you when you're using gen and you're programming also with object oriented uh, method uh, there's an automatic generated gen code which is generated uh, obviously is an automatic code generated so it's often it's really messy also because it has to uh, give a name yeah. to different um, to the different object you're using so it's kind of messy. It, it won't be able to create functions and stuff. So uh, the logic is the is like an sort it's like a sort of uh, reverse engineering. You start from the uh, deepest part of your uh, of your algorithms, and you try to think about uh, how can you condense, how can you tra um, translate one single uh, state of um, signal uh, processing in a function always because uh, signal processing is often uh, a function nesting or uh, some something about uh, instruction logical instruction and everything could be you could be condensed in a simple function uh, as i can as i showed you before so the process was uh, first i made a different function for these um, for the for the band of the equalizer then when when everything worked I condense it in one only code box, and uh, the things that it is really useful when you, if you want to start to work like this, is that in Gen, whenever you uh, put a new object, uh, the syntax of the object 
so the name of the function it the main uh, the name of the of what it make and um, the variable here to work is automatically generated and so you can understand how uh, which is the name of the function you need and which is the order of the uh, variables you need to make it work no so basically uh, you can uh, highlight just a portion yeah, of your page as you can see as you can see uh, if i click on the different module it will highlight in the automatic generated code and so you can understand how it's uh, you need to to write down to make it work and uh, step by step starting from the the um, starting from one point of your audio engine and then become um, going up uh, you can uh, translate everything you have object oriented in a code whenever it's uh, whenever it, it could be useful because it's not said that it's always the best solution the best solution uh, to use a code box but in this way in this case for me as i was using a uh, same uh, filtering function uh, just changing the coefficient for the eqing i found it rather um elegant to use uh, a single function and recall it uh, each time i need it um, otherwise using uh otherwise i was needing uh, a different object every time i had uh, one band for the equalizer and so that's it that's how i it's uh, a really um that's how i worked to translate this in code and if you need to know if you want to know uh, the the function the i don't know the math of the filters or or especially if you want to know how it sounds because you, now you know that it work but you, you don't know how it sounds uh, i will wait for you later in the breakout room okay awesome okay uh, Yes, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, that looks great and very useful, guys. So uh, keep this in mind if you're interested in uh, into knowing more about this and also maybe uh, look in how to do some very simple uh, conversions between uh, like a patch block diagram uh, paradigm into, into the code box thing. Uh, Eduardo can certainly show it to you later. And uh, please, Eduardo, feel free yeah. to share with us uh, your personal links so we yeah. can follow up your work. If you want to keep uh, an update of the work of this uh, studio and what we are doing, here is the brand new website yeah, of this uh, studio. Share the link in the yeah, chat. I will. Yeah, I will. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. That's the link. Okay. Awesome. Thanks and again. thanks to you. And uh, um, if you want, that's where we are sharing our the, our works uh, as a studio production or our lab works in case, uh, as you can see, Max for Live devices. So multimedia sound design, which are uh, start, which are starting as a project here, and uh, also feel free to follow us on Instagram. There are these links down here on Instagram, on SoundCloud or Facebook as well. And uh, thank you again for, for having me here speaking about my stuff. And uh, I can't wait to hear what Ricardo and Giorgio had to say about their work. Thanks. Thanks, Eduardo. Okay. Now we go from uh, resonant distortions and code box uh, tricks uh, to granular techniques, but in the spectral domain uh, with uh, the uh, Ricardo, Ricardo Sellan invention, which is uh, Lambda 2, this uh, very powerful Max for Life device uh, written in Gen and uh, that you can find under Isotonic uh, um, shop online. And it's uh, recently part also of a giveaway under Ableton uh, Post. So yeah, please, Ricardo, join us and uh, start your presentation. Yeah, thanks, uh, Massimiliano and uh, Music Act Space for for, invite, for inviting me here. Um, yeah, I'm a sound designer and Max Coders, uh, based in Venice. And usually I compose uh, electroacoustic music or art installation. With, uh, of course, with a lot of uh, Max. And uh, yeah, I will share my screen now. 
Okay. And yeah, here you can see uh, my Lambda 2 device. Um, I created this device mainly to, to have the possibility to uh, granulate the input audio stream in real time. So uh, without having a audio buffer or audio file and after that granulate it, but I want to, to have like a microphone or a guitar or an input uh, audio source and um, granulate it in real time. So this is the main purpose. Um, anyway, it has a lot of parameters and I want to, to take some minutes to take a look uh, over it. And uh, maybe after we can uh, take a look inside the, the gem patcher. Um, so maybe we can do it uh, with a little bit of sound. You can hear something. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is the, um, the, the audio input. Uh, the sample and now yeah I start the lambda so um, now it works in real time here and here we have the the first part to control the the mode of uh, granular synthesis and some input uh, parameters so as you can see here we can freeze the audio buffer so we can stop and move through the through the buffer also you can move when you are in real time or live mode and here we have uh, another things like a step sequencer so you can create uh, uh, grains uh, in sync with the uh, ableton like tempo so you can create a melody on rhythmic stuff Yeah. And here, of course, the gain for audio input, uh, buffer size. So uh, the duration of uh, this window now is three seconds, but we can choose like eight seconds, of course. And uh, this one is the recycle parameter that uh, works like uh, uh, overdubbing um, stuff. So. Uh, if you are in a pre mode, uh, it will um, uh, overlap the dry input uh, without uh, the granulation. But if you if you are in the post mode, uh, you will overdub in the in the percentage that you can set the the grains. Maybe we can take a look uh, after. Um, of course, the position are some random stuff, so we'll move. Uh, far away from the, the position. Here the percentage for reverse. Maybe the stop mode is more clear. Yeah. And uh, here we have the filter part. Uh, so all the, all the spectrum uh, will be divided into eight uh, splitted bands and uh, each grain takes uh, one of these uh, bands uh, in the future, probably I want to to make the possibility to choose the, the frequency of these filters, uh, but at the moment I, I don't want to because I don't want to complicate um, the all the guy and uh, I don't want to have a lot of parameters. Um, it works a little bit like an FFT, but it um, it's made by a simple bandpass filters because uh, yeah I want to to have uh, all stuff inside the gen. And uh, here, of course, we have the duration of the grains with a, with a random percentage. So we, we can have a noise or uh, like five seconds. And here the density. So it's like a grain generator. Here I want to add uh, a simple delay network that is different from Lambda, the first Lambda. Uh, they, the, the first lambda, lambda didn't have this um, delay network. It was like a simple delay, so each grains uh, will affect with uh, this delay value. 
but uh, if we if you use a random percentage uh, it will change the value of the delay each uh, grains uh, and grains by grains so you can hear classic uh, like modular things uh, about delay and uh, you can also interpolate this random value bit, uh, with a, a slide so it makes like glissando and of course feedback yeah it's a pure microsound approach <laughs> yeah yeah this part yeah <laughs> uh so we have uh, here the we can do like this here we have um, another part with the four tabs and here we we have the possibility to control uh, the parameters of uh our eight voices because um, I work here with uh, eight voices, eight instances. And um, the first tab is uh, this one with uh, this one note, and it's uh, it's useful for uh, transposition. So with this parameter, we can transpose like one octave down, uh, up or two. Uh, sorry. Yeah, or maybe one down. Uh, we have a little control for consent, for tuning, uh, the tune with a, with a noise with a, and the interpolation of this uh, the tune, so it, it works like more smoothly. But uh, of course, you, you can just transpose one voice. And this, this one can be great for a step sequencer mode because you can create a, uh, rhythmic stuff. Here we can modify the, the envelope of the grains. So now we have more attack. And also, we can exclude the distance, the voices. And also, the, in the other part here, we can play uh, grains with uh, a MIDI input. So if we have a MIDI track, we can, uh, from Ableton uh, 11, we can route uh, a MIDI a MIDI input to an audio, a Max for Live audio device. So here we can choose the, the track with the Lambda. And now I play with my, my keyboard or my computer. So you can transpose directly and generate the grains with the velocity sensitivity also. And here, of course, the, the volume of each voice to maybe is, is useful to create a different accent when you are in the step uh, step sequencer mode. Yeah. Because, yeah. And uh, here we are the, the last part with a spray that is in, that uh, will spread spread the grains in, in, a, in a left and right uh, stereo fields. Of course, dry wet and uh, the volume. So this is the very fast. Uh, uh, oh, I I, uh, I forgot the recycle because I like it. Uh, if we are in post and we we transpose like one voice, this voice will be transposed every every cycle. So in the second cycle we have two octave, and uh, in the in the first cycle four octave, and it's useful to create some drone sound. Or... Okay, uh, now I think we, we have a little time to take a look inside the gem patcher. 
and you you can see here the, the other window of Max. Uh, here there's the the main gen. This this one gen for for Lambda, of course. So all the engine is written inside here. I didn't use a uh, uh, code box very much, uh, so it's uh, all in uh, object. Uh, this is the main part. Uh, as you can see, I for having all the code inside the gem patcher, I didn't use a poly object uh, because I, I want uh, all the code inside uh, a gen object. Also because it's useful to, to export the code in C++ to to upload in, uh, at uh, at many hardware like mod device or the new Daisy Daisy chain hardware chip, and so in this case, if I want to eight voices, uh, I just replicate the the eight instances here with uh, with uh, their parameters, of course. So here uh, we have uh, the eight instances, and up there uh, all the rest. Uh, so each instant, each instance is basically a grain generator itself, right? Yeah, that yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they the, the same code. Um, here uh, we have the the main grain generator because the the grain generator are outside the instances, um, and these things root the all the trigger that uh, will be played. Uh, inside the the instances, uh, so this one is the main part uh, driven by the density parameter, as you can see with the with the noise percentage here. Um, I thought about density um, as a counter, so uh, each time uh, the counter uh, starts, uh, it will be uh, a trigger that will be root uh, to the eighth voice. So we have T one here. And we have T1 here, two, three, and four, and so on. And uh, yeah, this is the the main uh, the main part. Uh, so the trigger are rooted inside the um, the instances, and here it uh, will uh, go to the generator part. If of course, if it is uh, uh, free, so no buzzy because maybe the density parameter uh, will generate a lot of trigger, but uh, if the grains are set uh, like a, a five second of duration, uh, the, um, the instances can uh, receive uh, the new trigger if uh, the grains are, are not uh, finished. Uh, so Otherwise is... we have a click, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> ex exactly. So this is a simple method that uh, is like a gate for for buzzy instance and uh, inside the, the generator are uh, another counter to that i use to to read inside the buffer so uh, each counter uh, with a, a trigger start a uh, ramp from zero to to the duration samples uh, that i use to to read inside the the waveform inside the, the buffer and uh, also, uh, I, I made the, the transposition here uh, in the counter uh, because uh, it works like a time stretcher because, um, as you know, when we have a value uh, of one and we have no transposition, if we have a value of two, uh, the reading moving faster and we have a transposition by an octave and uh, the same uh, when we slow down. So the, all the transposition uh, is here, of course, with uh, all the expression for semitone and the tuning sand, uh, all the things. Uh, the trigger uh, are going there for a reverse percentage, and of course for the reading position offset in the, in the buffer when when you select the position to read. And here we have the the reading buffer with a wave. Uh, Wave object, and after that, of course, uh, we have the multiply um, by the, the envelope. So we are we are in the basis of granular synthesis here. Uh, I made the envelope with a, a triangle waveform, 
um, with a, a cosine function just to simulate uh, uh, logarithmic and uh, linear, uh, sorry, logarithmic and uh, exponential function. Uh, I didn't show before like that. Oh, yeah. So you, you can shape your, your envelope. And can I ask you the the um, FFT part of this uh, engine is basically a visualization? Uh, yeah, only only or, visualization. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, it, it looks so. It, it's a good representation because it it, it kind of gives you some very good uh, insights of what you're doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it takes me uh, probably a, a lot of time uh, instead. Uh, <laughs> the audio part because uh yeah i'm not so um, uh good in jitter and opengl things uh, but uh, <laughs> uh so yeah is uh, just for uh, only visualization well it works <laughs> yeah 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 thanks Ricardo. and um over there is a little part for avoid clicks uh, because uh, um as you can see here um i work with to to have a um, circular buffer because uh, we granulate the input audio stream. We have, prob we have a lot of problem when we transpose like one octave up or down or like a major uh, of one or minus of one because the reading position moving faster than the writing, writing position. So if we, have, we are in the same buffer, uh, probably they collide and uh, it creates a lot of click. Uh, so I, I avoid that to just add a little other envelope that works like when the reading position movie, moving near the writing position, uh, the volume going down to zero. And uh, when, when the reading position pass the writing position, uh, it uh, will go in uh, one to one again. So it, it creates a, a little bit like another envelope uh another grains but uh, we are in granular synthesis so i, I think it's okay we, yeah. from, <laughs> we don't have a problem for that um here there, there's the bandpass uh, filter that is the same patch that uh, uh we look at before a uh, little simplified because uh, i just want to to bandpass so um, i don't use all the coefficient and here uh, we have the delay network with the uh, with the spray, the stereo spray. And uh, as you can see, I I have a lot of uh, large object here, over there, over there, also uh, over there, over there, and this inside. Is the, for synchronizing the triggers. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, because I want to update all the parameters uh, when I generated new grains outside. Right. Yeah. Uh, is not for for all of things because for the volume it doesn't make sense because uh, if I turn uh, I want to turn off the volume uh, I, if uh, I put a latch here I have to wait that the grains are finished so it doesn't make sense and I use slide uh, object to just to have a, like a line yeah. uh, outside of the temperature and um, yeah but it, it's uh, it will be good to use latch like uh, for the delay randomness because uh, yeah, it generates uh, a random value each grains, grains by grains. So it makes the the effects that we we can we can hear we can hear before. Um, so we can go uh, outside. We can talk about density. Yeah, here there is another parameter like duration, uh, reverse the the noise generation, and Oh yeah. Also, I I use this kind of um, situation because uh, in in Zen, of course, uh, uh, I can use like this kind of things when I want to to have like a constant value. But uh, I, I see in in many forum uh, at uh, cycling that uh, when you are talking about this uh, in, uh, we are in an audio domain so it's like a variable that uh, uh, will update every cycle uh, in an audio domain so if 
if he, you you um, you doesn't deserve, deserve to to change this value you can just uh, uh, think as a parameter uh, parameter so uh, instead of using this you can use a param like I call it 05 and make a default to 05 so uh, it doesn't change every cycle and it, it will not cost uh, to the CPU um, I cannot see very variation about CPU uh, cost in this kind of things but uh, I see that probably is a good uh, good method where you you have a, a lot of uh, constant value that uh, you are not uh, deserve to change. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is um, something to to be investigated. Maybe yeah. So so far, what I know is that uh, the 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 amount of uh, CPU uh, percentage uh, like taken from the gen uh, computation it's uh, directly depending on uh, the number of uh, basically the number of objects you are using for for the processing inside the patch uh, so uh, but indeed some some stuff happens when it's about handling what happens inside gen with the rest of the stuff happening yeah. around max outside and uh, thanks ricardo i don't know if you want to uh, just uh, Tell us uh, something else before getting to the Giorgio presentation. All the other, uh, you, you know, specific things we can uh, uh, we can listen to them afterwards in the breakout room. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think it's all. Uh, uh, maybe we can we can talk uh, much later. Um, Thank you. Uh, please sh share you with us uh, some links. So we yeah. Can... Mm. I have just uh, Instagram. I, I have it on the website, but uh, I use Instagram like a portfolio. So, yeah, saying uh, here is is not a great thing, but uh, <laughs> it's it's easier. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, sorry for that, but it's okay. I will. Uh, I will write now. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Ricardo. you too. Thanks. Uh, Looks an awesome work, and uh, so we get to the third and last. Uh, event of uh, the day and probably also uh, very different from the first two uh, what i like to about this uh, this meeting is that uh, all the speakers were uh, so in you know different from between from each other and uh, their uh, investigations went through different paths and yeah so uh Giorgio is the next uh speaker and uh yeah he's uh, going to share with us uh, some uh, personal solutions and investigations concerning uh modeling in gen and uh um this uh and relating this kind of uh development uh, with some uh some practices concerning analog computers. So please, Giorgio, go ahead because you know it better than me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, you hear me well? Sure. Okay. Uh, well, it, it all started with, uh, with my usual curiosity to um, find um, new strange sounds, actually. And uh, because I'm always looking for new solutions for my softwares, um, maybe for those who don't know me, um, I am a, a sound artist and um, teacher of Max MSP. I've been teaching Max for 20 years, almost, almost now. And uh, I also make software. Um, some of those are quite known in the web, like GlitchLab and Berna and others. And um, well, uh, I, be I began in, in, in getting interested in, in analog computers um, some months ago. And uh, what about analog computers? Because not everybody knows what's what an analog computer is. So I will share my screen and give a little introduction before going into the topic. Um, well, 
it, before the advent of the of the digital computer uh, in the form of uh, today with microprocessors, um, until the, I think at the seventies, the um, analog computers were fair, uh, widely used uh for problems relating to physics and mechanics and chemical reactions that's because analog computers which are indeed analog they, they are not digital they don't have memory they don't have a cpu they don't have a ram they have just some um very basic form of circuits that i will illustrate later that uh, are very suited for uh, the calculation of uh, differential equations and differential equations are used very widely uh, in in many uh, fields of engineering or, or physics or uh, chemistry and um, basically to, to simplify uh, brutally what uh, a differential equation is uh, a differential equation is um, a, a kind of equation that instead uh, of giving us the solution as a number it gives you the solution is a function so you might well understand why um, for example uh, big quad filters are indeed solved with differential equations um, and uh, these are interesting because i found that you can um, you can uh, discover solutions to to the creation of sound, which are very not conventional, and uh, I think not very explored uh, uh, in 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 the history of digital music. Um, this is another uh, funny um, the, uh, analog computer. This one is very old. I think from the fifties or the sixties because it has uh, tubes. And nowadays they have, uh, of course, uh, chips and transistors. And uh, for example, I can show you a modern uh, analog computer before going into this. Uh, okay, you. I think you see me right now. Not more. Not anymore. My screen, right? Oh, we we still see the screen actually. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> Why? Uh, oh, stop share. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is a, a modern analog computer, and it's made for schools. And uh, it's made by a German um, company called Anabreed. And um, actually, I, I found it very smart because uh, I think I learned about computers, about analog circuits with this uh, a lot compared to classic um, electronic theory. Well, uh, an analog computer have uh, a number of very simple items which serves to to create to solve functions and these are integrators which means that they integrate the sum over time of a, of a signal and then you have summers which sum a signal and then you have inverters which of course invert the polarity and then you have multipliers you know what a multiplier is and the comparators and a few other extras but uh, the other important thing is that you have these potentiometers, which basically um, multiplies or divide a signal entering here. And it all started off because I was waiting this device to study. Uh, I decided to, I tried to create something similar on Jan. Uh, I wanted to see if, if it was possible to model an analog computer circuit on Jan, and indeed it is possible, thanks to the fact that Jan works sample by sample and it has all the uh, instruments to do it. And that led me to uh, create a software that I want to show you, uh, which I released. Uh, I think one month ago or something like that. And this is and this is it. Don't worry about the Japanese writing. <laughs> <laughs> In reality, it's it's not that difficult, but um, it has uh, two generators, one blue and one red generator. 
and um, they are identical and they are based on differential equations which I have in some ways corrupted to create some instability and chaos because one of the funny thing about analog computers is that they are traditionally used to solve the equations for uh, chaotic uh, attractors and so to to deal with chaos theory and um, so yeah i created these two oscillators which are fairly unstable and strange and then they go to classical traditional low pass filter uh, but we have here uh, feedback circuits also, uh, which is external from the, the filter, which is here. And then we have here um, some saturation and cross modulation. The, you know, the, the, the red part can cross modulate, for example, the filter or the frequency, if we can call this frequency. And then we have a mixing function here, and then a couple of uh, envelopes, and, uh, timing functions that create envelopes and stuff like this. Um, the uh, um, because of the connections, uh, I will not hear what I will illustrate to you right now. So if if it, if it's too loud, please tell me. I will try to okay. to. <laughs> to adjust something at uh, my best. And um, uh, what I want to show you with this is the capacity, the possibility that uh, this kind of work in Jan gives you to create very unstable and analog-like sounds. And uh, I th actually the best thing to do is now is to make you listen to some examples and then we will talk a little bit more okay uh do you hear it uh no giorgio not really not nothing yes now i can hear it okay okay right okay so i will go through some examples which i have here <laughs> because I don't remember anything about this time, about the process. So I, I'm thinking, oh, maybe there is nothing parts. I don't know. And so on. Wow. Um, actually, if you are interested in this software, um, you can find it on my website. I will give you the um, the link afterwards. Yeah, please. So, uh, I don't know if you guys know about the other softwares of Giorgio. Probably the, the most uh, uh, famous is Glitch Lab, uh, but also Berna, I guess. Uh, take a look uh, 
under his website because it's really very, very personal work, very unique stuff. Thank you. Um, uh, I think uh, um, hearing some laugh, I think that you were kind of uh, impressed by the, the craziness of the sounds. I was, I was also wondering that I wanted to ask you because I experimented in with my modulation delay device written in Gen, uh, the power of uh, cross modulation with m multiple feedback loops and things like this. And I noticed that uh, that what, what happens is usually what you expect happening at some point with stochastic functions and chaotic function is that no matter how uh, unpredictable they are, they kind of find some stable condition after a while uh, that they're running, for instance. And I wanted to ask you if it's the case of this. Have you been running this uh, software Bento for uh, uh, enough time uh, to you know, find some patterns out of the madness or? Well, there are, of course, patterns because attractors are, um, they are not random, actually. Yeah. Um, well, the difference when, when we talk about um, chaotic systems, uh, we must understand that we are not exactly talking about randomness. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples to uh, understand the difference, because, um, as you know, I have um, some experience dealing with um, particle physics, especially with radioactive decay. Uh, I've been investigating that with the European Commission. And uh, so when you have a, a, a radioactive uh, element decaying, that's random. Uh, because you don't know exactly when the atom is going to decay. You have a st statistical probability, but you don't know exactly when it happens. Instead, when we talk, and that's that's real random, all right? Okay. Um, instead, when we talk about, um, for example, uh, when you uh, flip a coin, when you flip a coin it is not random, actually. It is chaotic. But if you are able to um, make an equation for the speed of the coin, uh, the, the density of the air, and all the, all the incredible parameters that are involved in, in, the flip of, in the flipping of the coin, you are able to predict uh, exactly the, the, what the coin will be. And um, the same thing is about uh, weather. The problem with weather is that the number of variables are so high that it's impossible to predict it. And in chaotic system, what happens is that a, a small change in the co initial conditions um, have a big difference later. So it's the famous uh, butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. uh, so indeed, there are patterns. And, and the attractors are patterns. What, what makes them incredibly interesting is that um, they, uh, they sort of defy your capacity of your, your ability to predict them if, if you don't control all the, 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 the immense number of variables or how uh, it's incredible how a small change can change everything. And so, for example, uh, this is the, the reason why I have these divisors here, because of, uh, this, uh, this is usually it should be a number between minus one and plus one, but I had to divide for 1000 and, and just a little bit of difference to create a completely different pattern. So, uh, this adventure in, inside analog pro programming gave me uh, the, the possibility to concentrate um, very much on Jan, which is something I don't use very often. Um, oh, well, until uh, a few months ago, I was not really into that. Uh, I'm more, I'm more, I am more into classical Max MSP programming, but this gave me a reason to explore Gen, also because it is it might look totally um, not 
uh, it's not very related to what we know about sound processing. It's much more related to what we know about electronics. Uh, I'll make you an example here. I have here uh, three functions, which are typical of uh, analog computing. Uh, these are the typical um, simple uh, steps that uh, one does, one learn, when you are learning uh, uh, differential equations and analog computing. And uh, just to give you a demonstration about the difference between the, the the classical max programming or dsp programming and the 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 analog computer para paradigm this is a, a simple quadratic oscillator with two outputs shifted of 90 degrees one over each other and this is the 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 function and as you can see we don't have any um um uh, wavetable uh, lookup of to create the oscillator. The oscillator is strictly mathematical. It's not a sample. When you when you declare, for example, when you take uh, the uh, recall function in max MSP, that's basically you recall a wavetable, uh, which is pre-written, but it's a wavetable. Here, instead, we are not uh, recalling samples. We are calculating them through a very simple uh, differential equations. And, and this strikes me because at the end of the day, these two functions, these two blocks here that you see, which basically are uh, two integrators, because to create an integrator in, in, uh, in, um, in Jena, I have to uh, put all these objects together. What, what an integrator does? So imagine an integrator is something that sum numbers, but it has a kind of memory because it feedbacks onto itself. So for example, imagine you, you have a, an integrator and you start putting a 0 0.1 and on the next cycle, you put 0 0.1 plus the result of the uh, precedent uh, integration. So you have 0 0.2. And then you add 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and then you have a line. But it happens that if you feedback them, uh, st things start to get not linear. They start to get uh, exponential and logarithmic. And funny enough, this is a, a low-pass filter. And this is another low-pass filter. And in this uh, kind of configuration, what we get is this, it's a quadratic oscillator, right. which is <laughs> quite funny. Like a complex signal basically, right? I, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's strange. I mean, it's not the way I was used to uh, think about oscillators. No, because it seems that it comes out from nothing. That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it comes out from mathematics. It's not a, a weak table. It's <laughs> it's this is the funny part of it. And because of this uh, uh, peculiarity, you can do to um, to the, the, the equations things that create radical things that you never seen with classical oscillator. I will show you in a minute. Uh, this is, for example, is a simple function that uh, simulate the radioactive decay. Uh, radioactive decay, it's uh, over time, it, it, it has a kind of exponential um, decrease of the mass. So you have a, um, um, what we, what's it called, the, the half-life of, of, of an element. Say, for example, you have strontium-90, you have uh, every 30 years, yeah, you, your, the mass uh, you have, it's uh, halved in two. So uh, it's the case with 30 years of life. And this is the, the equation that describes this uh, um, decrease of the mass during time. Of course, you can stretch it like this or this. 
And this is nothing like than an integrator. I will show you, it's very simple. It's an integrator that adds, starts from minus one, and then it starts to add and add and add. And what you get, because the output of the, of the integrator is always inverted, you have this exponential decay. And um, an L computers can run into the two different ways. The first is a cyclic way, which is this one. For example, I, I uh, give the initial conditions here, which is basically a very simple click. I go to one in zero milliseconds, and then I go to zero in one milliseconds. And then the, the computer calculates the, the curve. But hold on your breath. Here, I'm not triggering continuously the, the, this um, equ equation here. Hold on. I just started on, and then it goes in feedback all along. This is like total feedback. It's not, uh, it's not being fed by anything. It's just going on on uh, on itself, and I can show you something more. Uh, this is a typical uh, dummy uh, when you it's a classical problem of physics. You have, uh, for example, um, uh, I don't know how, how how you call it. Um, well, uh, um, it's it's like the 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 the. the oh, how, oh my God! I don't know the term in English. <laughs> how's in Italian? Uh, L'ammortizzatore, come si dice in... Uh... Uh, the bump, uh. bumping, I don't know, the yellow... Dumper. Yeah, but bump, Dumper. Uh, the damper. Bump, yeah. Yeah, the damper in, on your car. Uh, actually, we have computers in cars, all right? There are so many chips inside a car nowadays. And, uh, and certain uh, cars have, um, can adjust the, the stiffness of the damper uh, accordingly to the kind of uh, ground they find. So when you do this with digital uh, techniques, of course, you can do it. Um, you basically spend a lot of energy and computing elements to make something very simple, actually, because it's very similar to uh, an oscillator, only that you dump it. And um, so, uh, the reason why analog computers are becoming interesting for for scientists and engineers is that uh, we probably are going to hybrid this technology with digital technology because of course um, think about that to calculate this simple function i'm using a computer a well, supercomputer actually it's a macbook pro latest model okay but you could do this with uh, a couple of simple shapes and and um, and uh, resistance and, and capacitors and yeah, you will them. not have like the the limits of the sampling, right? So, yes, that's yeah. that's right because it's analog, and and um, and one thing I would like to stress here because of course we are musicians and we are talking about music, is that a modular synthesizer. It's an analog computer, actually. A modular synthesizer is nothing else than a specialized form of analog computer, which creates and calculates different differential equations, functions. That's it. So uh, we are indeed using it. Probably most of us are using analog computers without knowing that. Uh, and so I find it funny. And uh, uh, to finish my presentation here, I will show you, um, let me find it. Um, hold on a second. Yes. This is an os uh, one oscillator I am developing during these days, which is very simple. It's a double harmonic oscillator. But there's a twist. Um, I have here um, a cross modulation between those two in different parts of the integrators. So these are two uh, second order 
uh, differential equations in which reacts one, one with each other. And let me see. Yes, all done. And this is a chaotic system which I have discovered, which is not yet um, a strange attractor. There are some, the, 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 equa the equation is linear, but nevertheless, we have some chaotic system here. You have to imagine chaotic, um, things get chaotic always at the border of the things. Uh, to give you the perfect example, think about uh, watching the sea and the and the land side. If you watch it from from a balloon from 100 meters above the water, you will see some kind of straight lines. For example, on a, on a, on a beach on a seaside, you will see a straight line. But if you go uh, on Earth and and kneel on the sand and watch the water. You will not find a line. You will find a, an, an incredible number of uh, chaotic um, uh, borders between water and sand. So much so that you are not able to tell which part is water, which part is land. So things get chaotic uh, exactly at the border of things, at the, at the border of doma, domains between things. Uh, and so, as you can see, um, um, using Max and another computer give give me the chance to re to to reflect and think about um, physical uh, uh, and mathematical problems, which are very interesting and uh, are not only related to physics, but they can be related to music in some ways, because, of course, you can create some kind of weird oscillators with, yeah. with this. And also, it, it is possible to, with this logic, it's very easy to translate this in an analog circuit, because it actually, it actually is a copy of an, an analog circuit. So this is it, and uh, as you can see, I'm using very simple things. The guy, the things you're doing, guys, with Jam is amazing. I don't, I don't know yes, how amazing. to do that, <laughs> but 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 this is just simple stuff. This is well, but it. you know, the, the the result is complex. So <laughs> the <laughs> result is complex. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's that's what fascinates me. Now, if you demand a breath, it's just a simple, stupid equation, but it. It's fucking huge, yes. and and it's in, it's 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 a cosmos, you know, in, in itself, and it's a stupid simple equations. Yeah, so no, it's uh, I, I'm in, when I was listening to the sound uh, you were producing now, my mind went back to the you know this uh, Wrangler, uh, the Ordic uh, modular uh, chaotic generator. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's that you can generate pretty similar sounds, and basically. That happens uh, with some cross modulation again between two oscillators and a shift register. That's it. But you can generate an enormous, you know, amount of different chaotic sounds. It's, uh... Well, actually, one of the things I discovered uh, studying um, attractors and differential equations, and you can apply this to oscillators actually, is that you have to get to to three elements. If you have three oscillators which cross modulate each other, then you create totally unpredictable system. Okay. It's just like it's just like the same of the pendulum. You you have one single pendulum, it's simple. But if you have a double pendulum, then you get a chaotic system. So 
in with three lessons, you are able to create on a on an incredible number of unpredictable things. But um, they don't do this phase things because what we are looking here is the space of the phase, and um, because the tractors uh, are not uh, monodimensional uh, entities, they are three-dimensional entities very often. And so they happen in different uh, parts of the, of the phase space. And uh, the, the, the possibility of tweaking this kind of algorithms from simple functions gives you the possibility to create uh, very strange interactions between the, 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 the functions. Very strange. Totally. Oh, so uh, if you want to have a look at my website, um, I will give you the address as soon as I find the chat. OK. Uh, this is the chat, I think. Yes. Uh, why in Japanese? Uh, that, that's a very good question. I'm going to, <laughs> under, to answer. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, please. Why Japanese? Oh, that's a good question. Well, um, there's, a, uh, there's always a fascinating moment when you, uh, unfortunately, it happens less and less to me, of course. But there's always a fascinating moment when it's a new instrument and you don't know what it does. Nowadays, if I look at any synthesizer, it doesn't matter how complicated it is. As soon as I see the labels, I know exactly how the thing work. So I thought to make a, a small mind game experiment with, with, with the people that use my software and say, okay, the software is not what you expect because it reacts to things which are not classical frequencies and especially the generator of course i'm talking about and uh, so it starts off with complicated things and i will hide totally the meaning of the those controls so the your only possibility will will be to use your senses your hearing guessing basically yeah but yeah with the, with the perception of course yeah, the, the, it's guessing, but what it's feedback because um, I hear something and I react to turning apart, yeah. and I hear, and then there is a feedback system, right? And and I find that it doesn't matter if you have the labels or not, or if you put in Japanese or uh, hieroglyphs, because um, the the fascinating thing is that. If you're going to use track music systems and 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 you, you kind of establish a, a kind of feedback between you and the machine and so it was an experiment to see uh just use your ears don't don't count on labels don't count on theory but take the 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 the, the software and uh explore it like you never heard about this Thing and you don't know how to operate it at all. This uh, this sounds I very I... interesting to me because uh, like uh, I have a similar approach uh, when uh, when I'm about to give performances. You know, my mindset uh, sh switches from the composing, uh, controlling uh, one to, to 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 the to the to the feeling one in a sense. But uh, it, it, it's uh, fascinating that this coming from uh you since i i know a bit of your practice and your approach is very it's very scientific but uh, it is, there's, there's it some is. moment when it you does. know the artist kicks in and probably it's this yeah that's <laughs> correct because um I, i've been using max to make very strange things for example one thing i i recently have accomplished uh, was to uh, create a system to generate trigs uh, for synthesizers from antimatter. I'm talking, you know, antimatter, uh, Star Trek. Okay, start um, the Enterprise was fueled by antimatter. Okay, and we can we there are some uh, um, artificial element like sodium twenty two which uh, products positrons, which is antimatter, 
And when, as soon as a positron encounter an electron, you have annihilation, a total transformation of the mass into energy. There is no nuclear reaction so powerful like annihilation. I'm talking about it is thousands of times more powerful than fusion and, and, and efficient reaction. It's the famous E equals MC square. Okay. And I've been I created a system, um, a special kind of FFT, but it's weird, that counts the energy out of a, a scintillator. And so I can focus where, which kind of energy I'm looking for, which is very specific, which is um, exactly the same energy uh, of the same mass equals energy of the electron. So I kind of created this uh, cursor that gets me only the clicks of the annihil annihilations. So yeah, I'm usually doing stuff that requires manuals. Uh, for example, you cannot use Bernal without manual because yeah. it's a 1954 electronic music uh, studio and you have to study how the hell you have to connect all the things, all the hell to operate because it's not a synthesizer. But with this software, I was trying to instead to to work in into a more intuitive way, which uh, of course have a good su success among young people because they are not into reading manuals. <laughs> yes, that's a, that's a generational that's, issues turned into possibilities. Yeah, I read the fucking manual. <laughs> but uh, but it was it was it was also for me because I'm interested also in in system which I don't want to codify and understand. I want to be playfully with it, and uh, because I think that probably I know so much that I think I could end in a in a dead spot always the same thing always the same mm. pattern always the same you know when i had the bucla 200e i was always using that thing in the same way because i had my block pattern in my mind but if you give me something without labels and i don't know what the fuck it does but i simply use it for me, it's a kind of liberation. It's a kind of freedom because it makes me discover things I wouldn't discover. Yeah, otherwise. I, I kind of, I vouch for this kind of approach because uh, it's a sort of yin and yang in making music, guys. Sometimes then, you need it. You uh, cannot go. Sometimes you need it. Definitely, yes. <laughs> so, um, thank you, Giorgio, for this uh, awesome uh, presentation.